While on jQuery Air, you'll have nothing to fear. Only smooth sailing skies while you re-engineer. All your web coding skills taught by Jeff Casimir. We hope you enjoy your flight. Hey, this is Jeff Kazmer. Welcome to jQuery Air First Flight. I'm not going to wear these ridiculous goggles the whole time. In this section, we're going to focus on fundamental JavaScript. If you're already familiar with the language, you know how to create variables, call functions, go ahead and skip to the challenges and see if you can move on to level two. Back in 1995, the browser market was driven by Internet Explorer and Netscape Navigator. Microsoft's Internet Explorer had VBScript. Netscape Navigator needed an alternative. They started with a language they called Mocha. Mocha name didn't really catch on. Then they went for LiveScript. Oh, it's live. It's got to be so much better. What was hot right then? Java. 95 Java comes out. Java is getting written about in all the magazines. It's catching on in computer science circles. So you know what we should do? Let's call our language JavaScript. Java and JavaScript are not related. If you know Java, it's not going to help you with JavaScript. You know JavaScript, it's not going to help you with Java. People have been getting confused about this for 16 years now. For a while, JavaScript was relegated to being a toy language. Uh, it was used for trivialities, little things when you want to spice up your web page. You got an eBay auction and you want the browser to drop sparkles when they bring the mouse across. That was JavaScript. Or the blink tags not doing it for you. Boom, 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 boom. JavaScript. Useless. It went for nothing. Now today, 16 years later, it's a totally different world. Now we've got things like Node.js doing server-side JavaScript. Google's V8 engine is an incredibly fast JavaScript engine that works away from the browser. You can do anything in JavaScript now. Moo Tools, Backbone.js is an MVC framework in JavaScript. If there's one language you're going to learn in the next five years, it should be JavaScript. This is the most important part of the future of the web. So then your question might be, if JavaScript is so great, why bother using jQuery? First of all, jQuery is easy. If you've never done JavaScript before, it's a great way to get started. Browsers suck. JavaScript is a standard. It's published out on the web known as ECMA script. Only super nerds call it ECMA script. But if you've developed with CSS and HTML, you know that the only thing standard is that no browser follows the standard. Browsers have different levels of compatibility and it can cause real chaos when you're trying to design in one browser and move to another. You know, something that looks great in your CSS and Firefox, you pull it over to IE and it looks horrible. The same is true in JavaScript. Sometimes functionality you write in Chrome and it's awesome, you bring it to Internet Explorer, it doesn't work. jQuery takes some of this pain away from you. It creates an abstraction layer between you and the browser and allows you to just write things once, have them work multiple places. The other problem is that users have old browsers. If you watch the stats for your websites, you'll find that users are coming in with Firefox 2, IE6, all these old versions. So not only do you have five different browsers you're trying to support, it's multiple versions of those browsers. It's difficult work. jQuery abstracts that problem away from you. You don't have to deal with it as much. You write jQuery once, it works everywhere. jQuery is not perfect you're still going to need some JavaScript, some pieces to stitch your jQuery together. Whether it's creating variables, doing things like if statements, you're going to need little pieces of pure JavaScript. jQuery is heavy and slow. If you have a really high traffic site, it might turn out that some pieces of your jQuery are slowing down the browser, slowing down all your users. But the beauty of jQuery is you can build now, perfect later. Get it working with jQuery, and then if you find that little part that needs to go really fast, build it in pure JavaScript. It'll run way faster. Just enough JavaScript, the basics. Throughout this tutorial, we're going to learn some of the fundamentals of pure JavaScript that you need to interact with your jQuery. In this first section, we're going to look at the most fundamental concepts, creating variables, looking at functions, and so forth. First, let's look at creating variables. You need variables to give names to your data. Whenever you're writing a program, you need a way to address your data, to talk to a piece of data, and variables are how we do that. In JavaScript, you've got a, the var keyword, followed by the name of the variable, 
then the data or the function on the right side. So in this case, I've got the var keyword, the name message equals, and then a string, hello world. Variables in JavaScript are dynamic. That means we don't declare a certain type. It, we don't say that this variable is going to be a string, that variable is going to be an integer. JavaScript will infer the type on the fly. Let's look at a few examples. First, I've got variable alpha is 42. See, 42 has no symbols on it. It's just the digits and the semicolon. That's going to be an integer. JavaScript will infer that alpha will be an integer. Then I've got bravo is 52. 52 has quotes on it, so it's a string. JavaScript will figure that out. Next, I've got Charlie with 5.2. JavaScript will notice that point in the middle and infer that it's a float. Delta true, uh, Booleans in JavaScript are true or false. They're reserved words. They're all lowercase, so it's T-R-U-E-F-A-L-S-E. -E. True or false, no symbols, nothing special. Next, I want to look at a few global functions in JavaScript. Some of the functions that are really helpful to kind of get you started. First up is alert. Alert you see a lot when people are first learning JavaScript, trying some things out. It looks like this. You have the alert function word, parentheses, and then inside those parentheses you pass in a string. Here I've got hello world. When you pass that in, the browser is going to pop up a little dialog box that has the message you passed in and an OK button. Execution is going to pause until your user clicks OK. Second, let's look at the confirm function. It looks like this. You'll see on the left side I've got var answer. I'm going to save the results of confirm into a variable named answer. I say confirm and then I pass in a message. It's going to pop up a dialog like this. Now this one's a little bit different than the alert box. When we pop the alert, we just had an OK button. With confirm, we're going to have cancel and OK. So we see the message we passed in, then the cancel button and OK. If the user clicks cancel, the function is going to return back false. If they click OK, it will return back true. So then you can take that result and do some switching on it with an if statement. Third, I want to look at prompt. We've already seen alert, that just gives you a dialog box with an OK. We've seen confirm, that's cancel and OK. And then third, there's prompt. So prompt, you pass in a message. Here I'm passing in passenger account. It's going to pop up a box like this, has the message, and then it'll have a text box where the user can enter in information. Whatever they type in, you're going to get as a string. That'll be the return value of the function. So here I'm storing that into the variable named count. We've looked at global functions. Now let's look at object functions, those functions that get called on a specific instance. So here I've got the string first flight. You can tell it's a string because it's got an opening quote and a close quote. Let's say I add on the function to lowercase. I have dot to lowercase and the parens. That's going to execute the function to lowercase and give me back the return value first flight with all the letters converted to lowercase. With those parentheses in JavaScript, it's interesting. It's different than most other languages. If you leave the parens off, what's going to happen is you, the function doesn't get executed. It returns the function to you. Next, I want to check out a few other string functions. You've seen how to call a single function. Let's look at what other useful functions there are. I showed you two lowercase already. Converts a string to all lowercase letters. There's two uppercase. Does the opposite bring them all, capitalizing each individual letter. There's caret. You pass in a number. And each string, as typical with most languages, the letters are zero index. So in hello world, the capital H is index zero, the little E is index one, and so forth. So if I say caret seven, it's going to give me back the seventh letter in that string, in this case, capital W. Next, I've got replace. I pass in to replace two parameters. The first one is the string you want to find. In this case, I'm replacing the exclamation mark. The second parameter is what you want to put in its place. Here, I'm passing in world with an exclamation, and so that gives me back hello world. Last, I want to show you split. Often with a string, you have multiple components you want to break apart. You call the split function. You pass in the substring that you want to cut on. Here I'm passing in comma and a space, and so wherever it sees comma and space, it's going to cut up that string, give me back an array with the component strings. Let's look at a few number-related operations. First, we've got plus. It's pretty simple. You just have number one plus number two. Divide, same. Multiplies, asterisk, typical for most programming languages. 
There's one, a global function called parse int that's useful. Remember when we did um, the dialog box where the user could enter in their data and submit it to you? You might use parse int if you were expecting a number in. You take a string, run parse int on it, and you get back the integer. It's interesting if you notice here, I've got 42 people and that converts down to 42. The way parse int works, it'll find the first thing that looks like a number in that string and that's what it'll give you. Last, I've got two string here. So with the 42 integer, call two string on it, now I get a string back. You can tell it's a string because it's got the quotes on it now. Let's take a look at arrays. Usually when you're writing programs, you're working with sets of data or else you wouldn't bother writing a program. An array is the most convenient way to have a set of organized data. Here I'm creating an array, storing it into the variable named x. I can tell it's an array because it starts and ends with square brackets. Each element of the array is separated by a comma. In this case, I've got three strings, the word zero, the word one, and the word two. Often from an array, I wanna pull out a single element. If I know the address of that element, I can do it like this. I could say x bracket two, and that'll give me back the data in position two. Just like strings, arrays are zero indexed. So the first position is zero, second one is one, third one is two. We have to make computer science complicated. Third, I've got x.length, and length is interesting here. Notice how it doesn't have the parentheses on it. Length is not a function, it's an attribute of the array. It's one of the only attributes that I commonly encounter in JavaScript, and it often trips me up. If you put the parentheses on there, it's not gonna work. It's gonna look for a function named length, which doesn't exist. If you wanna get the length of an array, you just say dot length, no parens. Last, we have reverse. Reverse is a function, so it has those parens on it. It gives you back a reversal of the list, a copy reversal. It doesn't change the original list. It takes that list, makes a copy, flips it, gives you back the reverse copy. As you write pure JavaScript, you're probably gonna have questions. If you start Googling those questions, you're gonna come up with sites like W3Schools and similar that mix a little bit of JavaScript information with a lot of ads, sometimes outdated information. It's just crap. The JavaScript community is kind of pissed about this and started an effort called Promote.js. The MDN or Mozilla Developer Network has great, accurate, current documentation. If you want information about JavaScript, this is the place to go. If you're writing a blog post and you're linking the information about JavaScript, link here. Help promote JS, push this MDN resource up the Google results, get better information for everybody. So that was just enough JavaScript. It's time for you to do some practice. Now I want you to try out using variables, basic functions, and arrays, see what you can figure out. Then we'll come back, dive into jQuery.